Welcome to Beyond the Press Release, a production of Gorecom, in which we take the time to speak with small cap executives after they put out important news. Back with us again today, happy to have him, Steve McCauley, CEO of Empire Clinics, trades in Canada under CBDT, in the U.S. under EPWCF, and for our great friends in Europe on Frankfurt under 8EC. We're having this conversation today because last week was Thanksgiving, so belated Thanksgiving to our U.S. investors, uh, but the company did have great third quarter news to come out. For those new to the story, Empower is an integrated healthcare company that provides body and mind wellness for patients through its clinics, digital and telemedicine care, and world-class medical diagnostics laboratories. More than just lip service, the company's revenues over the last, you know, give me give some highlights. Uh, Q2, 1,005% year-over-year growth to $861,000. Q3 just came out. $405,000 ballpark up 372%. Nine month revenue, 3.22 million. That's up 1,349%. Steve, welcome back, my friend. Hey, George, thank you. Appreciate uh, talking to you again and uh, making sure that we can get some, some good communication to our followers. Seems like every time we talk, you and I are both out of town. <laughs> I'm in California again. You're in Mexico. <laughs> One of these days we'll connect in the same city. Uh, yes, well, I guess technology allows us to get it done, so it's okay. Let's talk about Q3 first. That came out last week, and we've got a couple of important things to talk about. Q3. Yeah, first of all, A, yes, we want to go through them. They're really good numbers, but you are a growth story, and this is a quarter that ended a couple of months ago, about a quarter that began you know, six or seven, five or six yeah. months ago. Yeah. So, uh, you know, as a growth company, I guess we've got to look forward, but Let's talk about the quarter. How happy are you with the fact that you've got quarter over quarter growth and for the nine months, you've got tremendous growth as well? Yeah, I think that the, you know, the, the way that the financials are presenting, I think is, uh, is it's, it's, it's really changed. And this, this concept of we had to take top line revenue out that was there before because of the uh, planned disposition of the U.S. clinic assets. So that revenue would have been in there before. So if you take the third quarter, you know, there was an additional sort of $200,000 Canadian in the quarter that didn't hit top line because it's just now down below the line under a line item of discontinued operations. So uh, once that's all backed out, um, we kind of have like a new basis. And, you know, the, the year over year growth is factual. You know, that that's, you know, the numbers don't lie on what happened there. Um, and Although those numbers look high, I think there's a level of disappointment um, and part of it. And I really feel that for us, um, the quarter was a quarter of transition and we knew it would be. So uh, we, we like where the Medi Collective are going, but we knew that there would not be a bunch of contributed revenue from them yet because we're still building out those clinics in that, you know, that three month period of the third quarter. Uh, MediShore just came online, so we only got partial contribution uh, into the financials in the third quarter. And then Chi Medical underperformed, and none of us were happy with where they ended up. They were going through transition uh, as the lab expansion was completing through the uh, third quarter to get ready for fourth quarter. But for whatever reason, the kind of inflow of specimens was just not what we expected. And inflow of specimens getting, you know, processed generates immediate revenue and cash flow. So I think overall, um, pleased with a year over year, um, not as pleased with uh, the total top line contributions. I think it could have been stronger. Um, but as you said, we're, we're really a growth company that's preparing for 2022 and getting- Yeah, there's like two ships rate. passing in the wind, passing in the, in the ocean right now, right? Because the old is moving out and the new is moving in, and you just have this transition period here. Absolutely. You know, and we knew it was coming because we, we needed to clear out um, the old legacy clinic assets in the U.S. So we, we officially uh, shuttered um, the, the Pacific Northwest and, and the port location um, effective October 31st. Um, we've got uh, final stages of definitive agreement and closing of Sun Valley uh, imminently happening. Uh, and, you know, we're working back and forth on, on those documents and, and I have those documents in hand. So we're looking to have that done uh, really quick, actually. And uh, the Medi Collective are just opening clinics. You know, they're, they're getting it done. We had a, a number of clinics that we knew were planned for the fourth quarter. Uh, we've got 
you know, uh, Kitchener coming up, I think it's, it's this week, and we've got London, Ontario, and we've got Etobicoke Lakeshore um, still on schedule for, uh, for the end, before the end of December. And then uh, we've got the two acquisitions that we announced that are coming. Um, th those uh, agreements and closing will roll into January. Um, that's beneficial for us, beneficial for the, the sellers from, a, from the tax standpoint. Um, so that, you know, both groups uh, with us agreed that that would be the more prudent way to do it. So that's kind of our game plan. And then we've got... And, and those acquisitions, by the way, Steve, still on track. Everything is fine. Everything's uh, looking good. You know, we're in due, legal due diligence um, on the two groups. Um, nothing has come up um, at this stage that, you know, uh, gives us pause for concern. Uh, we know that in, in both cases, those groups already contribute annually or generate annually in excess of $4 million top line. And we know that, or we believe that um, we can actually um, add to that with kind of some of the features that, you know, the Medi Collectives uh, model brings to play by adding in paramedical services where we can, adding in specialty services where we can. So we're, we're optimistic that not only does that instantly give us an, uh, you know, 8 million of fresh revenue for 2022, uh, but we think that there's more that will come from it uh, as we kind of apply our business model around it. So looking forward, because that's why I want to start this. It's a growth company. The next 60 days, I mean, you're already looking great. Last we spoke, five clinics operational, seven in development construction, and these eight that are under acquisition, plus the pipeline. And we're not going to talk about that We're not yeah. going to talk about that yet, but come 60 days from now, because here we are essentially the end of November. Um your growth is dramatic in terms of clinic footprint, the number of clinics. Oh yeah, it is. And you know, there, there's a direct correlation with the Medi Collective clinics is that the day that you open and doctors start seeing patients, we're generating new revenue. And so this sort of just sort of builds on each other. Each location just builds on, builds on, builds on. Um, and we're just going to see through the quarters, you know, through the months and through the quarters, as locations open up, doctors see patients, our patient roster, you know, jumps and jumps dramatically, uh, then, you know, our, our revenues come along with that. But we knew that that was coming. You know, we didn't anticipate we'd have any Medi Collective, you know, revenue other than the, the existing ones that were opened um, uh, in, uh, in the Toronto area. But the new ones were kind of all fourth quarter, you know, build out. And then we were fortunate to be able to identify what I think are two very nice accretive um, acquisitions uh, that will be, you know, will be, just be so helpful to our, our growth model uh, going forward. And if we get them in, you know, early first quarter of 2022, then we've got, we've got literally a full year of that contribution that we have never had before. Yeah, so you've got operational and development acquisition What's the pipeline looking? Uh, because you're always looking at, and at one point you talked about looking at, you guys now talk about clinics in Alberta, BC and yes. other provinces. So yeah. how is that pipeline looking for 2022? Yeah, so the pipeline is still as deep as what we've been commenting on previously. And I think, I think the running count, if I have it in my mind, is uh, 41 locations um, with the acquisitions included. Uh, I know that we just recently signed two new leases. Um, in, I think it was in the past, you know, past couple of weeks. And, um, and the relationships with, you know, pharmacies and independent pharmacies that we're bringing into locations is working. Um, you know, I know that we deposited a $115,000 check uh, for contribution of tennis improvements to our Lakeshore location, uh, because that's part of the structure that we put in place. And that's Remember, a fantastic, a lot of people don't understand that, but that's partners contributing to the, to the expenses of getting these clinics up and running. Yeah. That's again, massive. If, if people, you know, haven't heard me talk about it before is we are closely aligned with pharmacies on a regional and national basis for a lot of reasons with our medical clinics. Um, having um, that connection to pharmacies and the real estate, we are able to, in some cases, get subsidized support for tenants improvements, some cases get subsidized uh, support for monthly rent, and in some cases we get both. So our clinic cost model going forward is, in some cases, dramatically different than what a standard clinic would look like. 
and that's, that's all old, hard cost. You got to put up the cash yourself. You got to yeah. get the finance. Everything is on you. Correct. Correct. So, you know, we're leveraging the value that our medical doctors and practitioners bring to a pharmacy and the patients and customers they serve in the communities that they serve. And so if we can leverage that to have better long-term operational costs or reduced operational costs, what it means is our profitability model is better or more improved than traditional models. And this is one of the key reasons why we've gone after it. There are other, other beneficial reasons that we see you know, with the Kai Care kits and products, we see it with Metasure um, and leveraging these relationships to get the shelf space that we want for our existing products and for the new products that we're bringing to market in 2022 and beyond. You're a growth and marketing whiz. I'll say, I'll say that, you know, just lightly. Um, is it safe to assume that your partners are seeing you, you are, you, you are making sure all the partners are seeing the current Medi collective uh, clinics that are open and getting them even more on board, even more excited about what's possible for 2022. Because seeing is believing at the end of the day. And, well, it is. And, well, if you look, if you just look at the turnout that we had for the ribbon cutting ceremony in Etobicoke Brown's line, um, I know that when we do a ribbon cutting in London, Ontario and the other Etobicoke, uh, I already know that there's a, a lot of you know, hype and, and local energy from, from you know, partners, from shareholders, from followers. And you know, it's this idea, as, as you say, seeing is believing and seeing how we build out these locations, meeting our physicians, um, seeing the brand, you know, with your own eyes, um, you know, really makes it tangible. And so when our partners and a lot of these big national brands, they're, they're big, big companies, these pharmacy groups, when they see us deliver and execute on all of the conversations that we had starting late in 2020, uh, 2020 and into 2021. And here it is materializing. We've, we've designed it, we've invested in it, we're executing on it. We're recruiting the physicians in the exact manner that we said that we would. And recruitment of physicians can be difficult, but our team are proving that they can, are, are very good at it. And so what this is doing in our pipeline is the national pharmacy partners that we're working with are saying, okay, let's look at other locations in Ontario. Let's look at other markets. Um, how can you help us in markets like Alberta or British Columbia or, or out East as well? So that dialogue with their real estate specialists um, is moving along faster and faster uh, and positively now all the time. So with that said then, because we do want to talk about stock price for a second here. Mm -hmm. But that said, do you have any doubt as to this growth phase now that you're in? It's, it's like you're in third gear, getting into fourth. Do you have any doubt about where you can be 12 months from now? Is it is this strictly a question only of degree of success because you, you've got an overwhelming confidence that you're going to blast off this model? Yeah, well, we're doing it. We, we have a game plan and uh, we have a strategy. Uh, it's working. Uh, we're getting much, much more visibility. Uh, we understand the value of patients. We understand the value of uh, recruitment of good medical doctors and practitioners. We understand the value of brand. And remember what if we've said from the beginning of all of this, we've wanted to create a healthcare brand, a medical clinic brand that's an, a brand not only nationally in Canada, but North America wide. You know, um, nothing would make me happier, you know, as I start to turn my attention back to the U.S. markets uh, to see the Medi Collective brand start to uh, show up in, in different regional markets uh, in the U.S. Um, you know, and the U.S. market, of course, is, you know, extremely large, um, but it's fragmented, just like we see in Canada, uh, ripe with opportunity. And so I think, you know, it'll be very interesting to see how we leverage kind of the power of our brand uh, and, and what it stands for, uh, what it looks like and, and what it brings to communities. Uh, I think that we have an opportunity uh, to really see some you know, continued explosive growth in the years to come with our medical centers. Now, you strongly hinted at that in our last conversation where you said the Canadian team is now on track, it's flowing, mm -hmm. 
pipelines growing, everything is now it's just a case of execution. And you can almost let the Canadian team really oversee this, obviously with your guidance, but they can handle it. Yeah. But the U.S. is where you're looking. Are you able to provide, A, any more information on that, or B, maybe a, a general timeline as to when we might hear more about what you're planning to do in the U.S.? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, general timeline is it's, you know, really, you know, this will roll into 2022. Um, sure. We we have our plates very full here um, through the month of December. We have, you know, so many great initiatives that are just happening and moving along um, as we'd hoped. Um, but we also have pipeline initiatives that we're working on. You know, we just we're not sitting still um, on the growth curve. Now, share price aside, I mean, I'm not happy with share price at all. And, you know, I'm the largest shareholder. So um, uh, I don't, it doesn't drive me completely crazy uh, because we've got the execution of our operations. But I tell you what, I'm, I'm sensitive to it and I'm aware of the sensitivity of our followers. You know, we're kind of in this tax loss selling season uh, again. Uh, it's more than likely there's, you know, a good bunch of that taking place, but we'll keep focused on growth. Uh, we'll keep trying to share good news when we can and, uh, you know, just kind of weather through this right now. Uh, I don't think that the current share price is a reflection of the future value of this company. Um, in fact, you may be a victim of your own success a bit because we did have that really big uh, move in the first quarter. Uh, and even even the end of last year. Yeah, it and, started and, about, started about a year ago. Yeah. And there are no doubt going to be investors in a position who would just want to take some losses. But um, you know, is that you think that's the only disconnect, or do you think the market for the most part understands that you're now in full growth mode and delivering and executing, and you you actually given us some pretty good visibility. Well, I think I think I mean yes and no. I, I think that there's probably a you know a group that. Um, really didn't or you know, didn't understand kind of what the third quarter financial results were. Um, as you said at the beginning, you know, that's a retroactive look five months effectively um, to uh, what was going on. And it was very much a transitionary period. The, the layout of our financial statements changed so much with this concept of discontinued operations and Sun Valley uh, pending sale of those assets. Uh, so I think, you know, when people see things presented very differently, you know, it concerns them. Uh, I think what we're doing right now um, is helpful. It's, it's letting people know, reminding people um, why you're here in the first place. Um, and uh, we're here to be part of the journey of growth um, in a great sector, pure play healthcare. And again, we said we wanted to get to pure play healthcare. So we're having to do the hard work to get there. And it takes time to get through, you know, these matters, but we're getting it done. And, and we can continue to, you know, push the growth initiatives. And it's my belief that um, our followers, you know, who get it will stay with us. I think new followers are going to come in and see it as an opportunity. Uh, particularly where, you know, the current price is. And, and then we, you know, start to get, continue to get rewarded again when we keep ticking away at a new opening, a new opening. And we have Kai, you know, running and producing the way that we think it should produce. And MetaSure, it's new, but, you know, early days with MetaSure um, sure do look good. And I, I'm more than pleased and satisfied um, um, with how they're coming and how they're growing. Yeah, and I'll tell you, as a 25-year veteran, even longer than you, Steve, in the small cap space, because you know you came from a much a much bigger market cap pedigree. I've been in this situation personally more than a few times, where great company, I know where it's going, stock disconnect, and people ask me, George, what do you think about ABC? And I'll say, Hey, look, I'm not happy, but I'm not worried. Um, and I think that's a situation where it is here. No one's happy about a 25 cent stock price uh, during tax loss selling. But at the same time, I got to tell you personally, I'm not worried because I can see the growth ahead. Yeah. It's just a case of calculating how many clinics and everyone's got to do that at home. By the, and, and that's not including 
MetaSure and everything else, right? There's so right. much, and we're not going to talk about the whole thing today because we want to be a little more specific and targeted, but it's just a case of extrapolating now. I'm doing my bath and napkin math. Other people are doing theirs. There's going to be highs and lows and somewhere in the middle. But to me, it just adds up to a year from now, end of November, we're going to be sitting here and talking a completely different situation uh, with this oh, yeah. company. Yeah, no, und undeniably, undeniably. I mean, if, if we're, if we, we literally come into uh, uh, the first quarter of next year um, and our acquisitions go through and the openings go through, I mean, we're going to, going to be sitting uh, just in the Ontario market with somewhere in the range of 800,000 patients in our roster um, and in the neighborhood of 70 medical doctors and, and 160 staffers. I mean, you know, it's, it's a going concern. And, and those are just, and, and the clinics are filling up. This is one thing that we're seeing is that the moment that the doors get open in that community, there's nice buzz and hype in the community. We are leveraging the pharmacy customer base because they're right there. So and now they're seeing us every day. Um, and so we're seeing our doctors get booked out immediately, you know, in full. And then our job will be to continue to build our medical doctor roster, build our practitioner roster, really get into some of these specialty services like, you know, uh, the partnership with Medics Health and Teledermatology. Um, that first location in uh, Brown's line is fully operational. We've got two more coming immediately, uh, which is what we said we would do in our pilot. And so um, we think the, the, there's great value in that technology and that service um, for, for patients um, who may be concerned about something on a, on a dermatology basis. But when you step back and we add in the billing codes and the revenue model for us, using that technology and using that service, uh, we think it's going to play out to be really interesting and, and really accretive. And it's something that you can see quite a lot of patients every day in each of those locations. And you go back to, you know, go back to the back of your napkin again and just go, okay, billing code times this many patients per day times this many sites on a monthly basis than an annualized basis. It's like, that's accretive. Yep. And so it looks, we it looks like good to me. Yeah, we, I mean, and a lot of our followers who, you know, showed up for the uh, ribbon cutting ceremony uh, in uh, Etobicoke Brown's line actually got to see, you know, the system yep. in action um, with a dermatologist, uh, Dr. Champagne, I was so kind enough to join us there. So um, these are interesting for us. And I think it's, um, these are aspects that uh, are, have the opportunity to set the Medi Collective apart uh, in the markets that we serve. Um, you know, providing better delivery of care, more diverse delivery of care to patients in that community. Great working environments for our staffers, but also a great environment for our patients. And right. La last question to you is this. It's the end of November. Yeah. Will we see you again here on Zoom? And will Ontario investors see you again uh, at the Etobicoke Lakeshore opening uh, in December. So we'll be we seeing you oh, we've got, we've got London, we've got London and we've got, we've got Etobicoke. So, um, we'll be finalizing those dates, you know, over the next sort of couple of weeks. So I'd say it's, it's yes to all. I mean, I think we should, uh, have another corporate update before year end, um, you know, uh, with Agoracom and its followers. Uh, I have full intention on, uh, being attending, uh, in person for the ribbon cutting ceremonies. That's great. And, um, like I say, we'll just, We'll update everybody uh, as those dates get firm um, uh, with our doctor starting and, you know, lights going on and, and everything kind of, you know, ticking all the boxes. But, but yes, that's certainly the plan is uh, for December. All right. So looking forward to seeing you again, both in person and virtually. Enjoy Mexico. I'm signing off from California. Thanks for joining us again, Steve. Always appreciate it. Great, George. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it as well. To everybody at home, you've been watching or you've been listening by podcast on Spotify, Google, Apple, your favorite podcast platform. To Steve McCauley, CEO of Empire Clinics, trades in Canada under CBDT. For our friends in the US, EPWCF. And for our friends in Europe, on Frankfurt under 8EC. For those who are new, you got to do your due diligence. Start that off on Agoracom by getting the company's profile page and then linking over to the company's main site to do your deep dive due diligence. If you believe in the future of clinics, healthcare, tele, telemedicine, teledermatology, all the, fun, uh, the the wonderful, fantastic things that Empire Clinics is doing, then you've got to do your due diligence because I think 12 months from now, 
a lot of you are going to be saying, why didn't you tell me so? And we told you so. Have a great day. See you next time. Hey, guys, this video is over, but don't forget to help your company by liking it and even leaving a comment below. And then don't forget to help yourself by subscribing to our channel and never missing another great Agoracom small cap video.